Hi, I'd like to talk about uh, woodworking jigs today. Woodworking jigs used to uh, to ensure uh, repeatability and interchangeability of components uh, working in small batches of furniture or general woodworking and I'll get into that. I'm Norm Perlow from Wood Skills and I'd like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. So as you see in front of me, I've got a whole collection of uh, woodworking jigs that I've developed uh, in my furniture making and my earlier box making phase and uh, so I'll start with how critical uh, jigs can be in your in your own work. So jigs and fixtures can make repetitive uh, woodworking tasks uh, safer and easier. In other words, jigs introduce repeatability and minimize risk in your woodworking and furniture making and this is why I've, uh, I've embraced uh, Good to create woodworking jigs in my own work over the years and I'll, I'll talk about the different jigs I've, I've developed. So woodworking jigs ensure that uh, your cuts are straight, holes are plumb, and parts are square. So jigs are worth the time it takes to make them because you can use them for several years afterwards. As an example, this is a, a miter spline jig that I developed in the 1990s, so it's, I would say, maybe close to 30 years old and I still I can still use it today although I uh, I've progressed to using hand tools for this type of thing this was uh, primarily used on a table saw just to give you an example they're fairly rugged once you create them correctly and uh, you spend the time to invest some time into creating them so in industrial terms the jig is a work holding device used to guide the motion of another tool like a cutting tool or a drill bit so jigs are heavily used in industry also and uh, metalworking industries and for creating components for, uh, for machine, machine work. This has also migrated down to woodworking over the years, of course, or decades. So the main purpose of jigs is to increase uh, interchangeability, to simplify a manufacturing process, and to assure high accuracy and repeatability in the mass production process. Uh, we can scale this down and replace the term mass production process to small batches and furniture making and this is what I primarily use everything here for. Now like I said, I've, uh, I'm a former box maker. If you have watched my earlier videos and I talk about my, uh, talk about my, uh, my box making business and I've since progressed to furniture making. So you can see some of the uh, jigs are adapted to box making and then some are adapted to furniture making. So you develop jigs to, uh, to speed the making of furniture components and to ensure they can be interchangeable. Excellent for small batches of furniture again. The best material for jigs is uh, a veneer core plywood such as Baltic birch ply and that's what I predominantly use in my, uh, my jigs. But I also use uh, a lot of offcuts and of course we all have offcuts in our work. So you can see an example of uh, the combination of a small veneer core plywood with uh, with a piece of offcut, and this is a drilling guide that attaches to or clamps to the side of a, a furniture piece. It's just one example. So using dimensionally stable uh, materials ensures that the jig is accurate, is easy to use, and remains accurate throughout its life. I can attest to this. So in this case, I've got some MDF on this saddle jig, and this uh, is a, essentially a drilling guide, but the uh, the MDF ensures that it's uh, dimensionally stable throughout its life. It doesn't distort or warp. So template jigs are the most basic type of jigs and is used to machine a few simple parts for small batches. Template jigs are used as layout guides for locating holes and contours and are usually secured to the workpiece through the use of clamps. Uh, most of these uh, woodworking jigs are attached to a workpiece with clamps, of course and I, uh, I'll go through a few of them and I'll, I'll bring up some, uh, some more information about each individual one. So jigs are uh, most valuable in repeatability and interchangeability of furniture components, specifically in, with small batches. And I'll start with, uh, again, I, this is a miter spline jig that I developed close to 30 years ago. I used, uh, it's used on a, on a table saw in the boxwood 
would attach to it, and I'll show an example of that, and run through the, uh, the blade. Uh, the kerf is a 1 8 inch, so it translates to 1 8 inch uh, spline kerf, and I find that a little large, so I progress to uh, just using uh, hand saws to create my, uh, my spline, my kerfs since then. And then again, in the, uh, in the vein of uh, box making, I have a series of uh, jigs I've developed close to 30 years ago, and these were used for, uh, this one specifically was used for, uh, for installing a quadrant hinge in a, uh, in a box, so it clamps to the side of a box on one corner and then use it to, to uh, they're useful routers by the way. So early on in my uh, woodworking career, I worked from predominantly with, uh, with routers and this type of jig, but I tend to do this with hand tools now. I've moved away from, uh, from routers in my work. I hardly ever use them anymore. Don't use them at all, actually. So this is, uh, again, a, uh, a template jig used to uh, create a mortise for a uh, quadrant hinge. Again, in the, uh, the box making vein, this is another similar type uh, jig, template jig, used to create uh, an opening for this handle. I used this uh, extensively in my box making. This was a handle for either a drawer or for the, uh, the top lid. So this would create the opening and I would just uh, glue this in. So it's designed specifically for that. You'll find that the opening is much larger because that allows for the router bit. So something you need to take into account when you're developing your own jigs if you're using routers. So that uh, these two go together. And this is another uh, uh, jig, template jig, again for box making. And this would create uh, a small mortise, an opening for the, uh, for the hinges. In the, for the lid attached to the body of the, uh, the box, in my case a jewelry box, and this was specifically for one type of hinge that I use mostly. I standardized uh, a lot of my hardware because I was, I was actually uh, box making extensively in those years and I marketing my work in nationally throughout the U.S. and uh, internationally, so I create them in batches of 18 to 20 boxes, so I had to standardize the hardware and the jigs were, uh, were in, invaluable in, uh, in box making for me. Now here's another, uh, again, a, uh, a template jig for the quadrant hinge, and this is for the opposing corner. Now you'll notice one is a left and one is a right, so this was uh, it's a, it's a pair and this would create two two openings for quadrant hinges, so I wouldn't have to use the uh, standard uh, hinges and use... Uh, I've migrated to uh, quadrant hinges. These are uh, some other template jigs I have. This is a drilling guide that I use extensively in my current work. This is for creating a series of dowel holes in the sides of a top and bottom panel of a cabinet, and this would be uh, <coughs> installed on the side of a top and bottom panel and used as a drilling guide, so it's reversible, and I can flip it over, and I can create the, uh, the holes accurately, and then flip it over and create the uh, matching holes in the, uh, in the side panels, so everything's reversible. And this is a stop, so this is actually an indexing stop to help align the, uh, the drilling guide. Now these drilling guides are made of wood, and they do wear out, so I, you eventually have to replace it. The holes just get, simply get larger, so I've progressively uh, move through harder and harder woods in the actual guide itself and I use maple now so it lasts a little longer but again they do wear out and if you want high precision you need to, you need to uh, just keep replacing that every so often. There's a smaller, so this would be uh, designed for a specific length or a depth of a cabinet. And there's another one for a, a shorter cabinet, this is the depth would be shorter so again they're all reversible so this this part indexes to the uh, cabinet side and then this part indexes to the uh, to the cabinet top and bottom and everything flips over even the screws are uh, mortised in differently. Again, another version. So I kept a considerable amount of version, uh, versions of these but again the holes do progressively get larger in the diameter over time they wear out. And this is another guy, this is a more complex one for a deeper cabinet and uh, it does have a provision for an indexing pin, I just don't have it attached. Again, several more holes and the, the holes closer to the ends are always uh, closer to each other for strength. 
This is an example of a, uh, this is a saddle jig and used to uh, bore large holes into uh, furniture pieces. The, the criticality of this is that if you don't, if, even if you do have a drill press, sometimes the furniture components are long or unwieldy and you can't really attach them to a table on a, on a drill press. Now I have a drill press, I don't have a floor mounted drill press, I have it sitting on a, on a pedestal. It's fairly large, but it's not the floor mounted version, so I t tend to have to use saddle jigs considerably because I only have uh, maybe two or three feet to uh, of allowance for, uh, for length of uh, furniture components. These are some more saddle jigs, drilling guides, and this is actually a, a crude attempt at a pocket hole jig or something similar to a pocket hole. I just found this actually. I, I used this in some. Uh, some small batches of furniture way back when. So the holes are drilled at certain angles and for a drill bit to go through. And this would clamp to the side of a, a component or a corner of a furniture piece. This is a template for a table leg. So I could, uh, it actually sits on a table for a little of a drill press. So I can drill holes accurately. So this would, uh, this would provide a stop and this would provide the, uh, the opening for the, the, uh, the table leg. So I can fit it in. Once it's clamped, I can ensure that the holes are drilled perfectly. So I would create, I like to create components for uh, for small batches of furniture. I like to create the components uh, together. So I would create the components in a few hours and then shift to a different set of components. And that's when these templates, jigs come in handy. So I think I've talked about all this. And this is a strange one here. I can't remember what I used it for. I usually identify them or mark them. Again, it's a drilling guide, but it was probably for a uh, for a specific uh, profile. And another example of, uh, and I'll show, I'll show you some, uh, some more information on this as we go along. This is, uh, these are Kamiko jigs, and these are specifically to create the small components involved in, uh, in a pattern or Kamiko motif. Again, the Kamiko jigs I just referred to, these are used in conjunction with a very wide chisel. This is a one inch chisel, one inch or maybe an inch and a quarter. And uh, the components are, uh, this is a stop that slides and it's got multiple holes so I can increase or decrease the length of the component. And once you've, uh, you've set the components into this, uh, this groove, you uh, use the uh, chisel to pare away. And what this does is it creates specific angles used in Kamiko. Now if you're familiar with Kamiko, you know what I'm talking about, but all the angles are either 67, 22 or uh, 45. And these, uh, so these, I need two jigs to create the angles and they're all, it's fun to make this and I enjoy creating Kamiko, but you actually do need these jigs to, uh, to be able to pair away at that angle. And I typically use basswood, so it works really well when you're pairing. But it's another example of a specific woodworking jig used for, uh, sp specifically for, for Kamiko. I'll put that aside. Now I have a, uh, another jig I'd like to show. This is a, uh, a dovetail jig that I developed several years ago, maybe 20 years ago, <laughs> and it's gone through some uh, iterations along the way. This is one of the more recent models. I've got two of these, and then my earlier ones were uh, more crude attempts at this, but this is a more, more substantial, more uh, rugged version that I've used for several years now. So it has uh, knobs, and I would attach the uh, the components, the, uh, the tailboard and the pinboard, and I align them or actually chisel away and remove waste using the same jig. They're spring-loaded, so it's easier to uh, attach things, and I've got a little strip of sandpaper in the calls to uh, ensure that the pieces don't slide. So I'll give an example of how that works. This is a, a tailboard, and this would, would clamp in. Once, you, once you've used this a few times, it's uh, very straightforward and easy to use. It just needs a little bit of getting used to it. So if I, if I clamp the, uh, the tailboard in, I can actually use it to, uh, to remove waste using a chisel and a small mallet from the, uh, or without having the, uh, the tailboard on the, uh, your actual workbench surface and damaging it. So it provides that extra layer and it provides a form of alignment so I don't go past the baseline of the tails. So that, that does that. Then I can actually, uh, where did I do it? So 
if I back this off, I'm transferring the Here's a good example. So if I'm transferring uh, the tails, if you do tails first, by the way, which I do mostly, I've never actually done it the other way. So if I if I created the tails and I need to transfer into a pin board, I would use uh, this part of the uh, dovetail jig to to clamp the pin board and then mark the outline with a marking knife, create an outline, and then pencil it in, and then saw a way for the pins. To match the tails. It's another uh, factor, another uh, advantage to having this dovetail jig. Now once I've done that, that specific uh, task, I can remove this and work away again at the, uh, at the pins. So this, this would equate to a drawer front and it's always thicker than the, the drawer side. So I need to, this is the advantage of having uh, springs here. So then I would clamp this in and then remove uh, remove the waste from uh, from the pins. And again, because it's against this uh, this call, it prevents me from going back too far back or from from the uh, from the bottom or the baseline, and it creates that extra surface so I don't damage my workbench. So it's quite an interesting, and I do offer plans for this, by the way, on my on my woodskills.com website. I'll put that. So along with woodworking jigs or templates, now these are just an example of some of the templates I uh, have developed over the years for my own work. These are table leg templates. So I create, uh, I create table legs with this contour. When I did create tables, I, uh, I also create the tabletop and the legs and the base. I usually create them in small batches, so I needed to, uh, to ensure that they're all uniform in dimensions because I, I do switch them depends on the uh, what the client what the type of wood the client wants and this is another form of a template for uh, a more geometric type base for a table so that's uh, so it doesn't take too much too much work to create this afterwards after you've created a piece my recommendation is to develop templates because you're inevitably you'll be recreating that piece at some point in the future. And these are uh, templates for uh, small uh, wooden hand planes that I developed uh, over 20 years ago. I was actually creating, I had a small tool works business offshoot of my, my regular woodworking business and I create small hand planes and market them. But I've since done away with that. I much prefer creating furniture. So these are the templates for the uh, the actual uh, smoothers in different uh, profiles. Well, that's an example of specific templates and not so much jigs. You'll see in some of the additional information you see all, uh, all the, you'll see a more detailed version of everything I've talked about here today. I hope you've enjoyed this talk on woodworking jigs and you'll, uh, you developed an understanding of how critical they are, they can be, to furniture making, especially if you're working in small batches, to introduce repeatability and interchangeability of components and how critical it is if you uh, want to ensure that all uh, your furniture pieces are uniform across so you can actually interchange parts and components. Sometimes clients demand a different wood, uh, walnut, maple, so you can create the components both in maple and walnut and provide that to the client as an option. And these are the uh, drilling guides for the cabinets, so that's a very good example because I use these extensively, extensively. In my, in my, I, make, I make most of the cabinets on stand now, so this is the technique or process I use. So I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, and adapt it to some of the uh, furniture making and woodworking I do and thanks for watching.